welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you once again here at Bible Track Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. And I want to say a particular welcome if this happens to be your very first time to be part of our Bible study together. Well, we're here to study the Word of God. We're here to encourage each other to share the gospel. To that end, I have my Bible open in front of me to the book of Titus, Titus and chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. We are at the very threshold of our verse-by-verse study here in the book of Titus. I have a gospel tract in my hand. Now, a gospel tract, and by the way, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're referring to a short written presentation of God's holy word. This year happens to be our 80th year of ministry. We have a mission statement here at Bible Tracks Incorporated. It says this, taking the word of God to all the world, but we've added a little phrase now. Now it says, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. For 80 years, we've been publishing gospel tracts, giving them away free of charge, paying the shipping, and friend, multitudes of thousands upon thousands of people, I mean that literally, have come to Christ over these 80 years. Now, I cannot give you an exact number, but frankly, I would be almost willing to bet a month's pay that a a million people at least have come to Christ, at least that, because of the faithful witness and gospel work done by people using gospel tracts. I want to encourage you to get some gospel tracts from us here in just a moment. But right now, get your Bible open to Titus chapter 1. Also get something on which you can take some notes. Now, friend, a moment ago, I mentioned our mission statement. Again, it says, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. Now, did you notice that the word tracks or gospel tracks are not found in our statement? That's what we do. We What we do is we print tracks and we ship tracks out. But our tracks are the means of taking the word of God to the world. Tracks are the vehicle. It's not the cargo. There's a difference between the vehicle that moves the cargo and the cargo itself. You understand, don't you? The word of God is what we're sending out to the world. We can send pieces of paper out to the world, but unless they contain the word of God, well, what good are they? Well, I'm saying all this because today, as we come to our Bible passage, we're going to find the mission statement of the Apostle Paul. Now, the core value of Paul's life was to glorify God. His mission statement on how he was going to do that, how he planned to bring glory to God, had two action points to it. Those action points are found in our passage today. I wonder, do you have a set of core values for your life as a believer? Do you have a mission statement for your life as a believer? Well, I mentioned gospel tracts here. I have one in my hand right now. This one's entitled, Seriously Speaking. Seriously Speaking. The subtitle says this, You May Be Sincerely Wrong. Do you understand it's possible to really be serious and you're thinking about something, but your your sincerity is not based upon facts? A lot of people are serious about their walk, uh, about their going to church and their morality and their religion and so on. They're serious. But friend, you can be serious but be wrong if the facts upon which you are hoping are not found in the Word of God. What this gospel tract does, seriously speaking, it confronts the fact that people who are very religious but yet do not know Christ as Savior have a sincerity, but their sincerity is based upon a basis other than the shed blood of Christ and the resurrection of Christ from the dead. 
Here's a great gospel tool to clearly explain God's plan of salvation, seriously speaking. It's just one of over 40 tracks in a sample packet. We'll be glad to send you free of charge if you will contact us. Now, at the end of the program, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Please be ready for that. Or you can just go and go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Give us your name and address. We'll be glad to send that to you absolutely free of charge. Well, Titus, please. Chapter 1, verse 1 says this. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. I'm going to stop right there. Now, I am really struck by the length of the introduction to Titus. I read verses 1 and 2. It actually goes through verse 4. As you know, I hope, that the Apostle Paul was the human penman of 13 different New Testament books. Almost all of them have much longer or are much longer than Titus by the number of verses in them, yet they have far less space given uh, to introducing the topic of each of the books. I'm going to talk here for a moment about my measuring tool. When I talk about the length of the introduction here, I'm referring to the percentage of the number of verses in each of the books that are used in the introduction. Normally, when Paul gives an introduction to the books, whether it's Romans or 1st or 2nd Corinthians or whatever, normally 1% to 2% of each of the books is given over to identify who the author is and who is receiving this book. Titus, though, uses 8% of the book. 8%. Now, frankly, there's no theological lesson here in this percentage, but it is unique, and it is not to be easily and quickly glossed over. We got to deal with the introduction. Now, my title for chapter one is Healthy Church Leaders, Healthy Church Leaders. But before the Holy Spirit moves Paul to write about healthy church leaders, the Spirit moved Paul to write about himself and the tasks of his life, and then to write about his protege, Titus. Now, to walk through verses 1 through 4 with the introduction here, I'm going to be using some words beginning with the letter P, like in the word paper. My first word is this, Paul. That's man's name who is the human penman, Paul. He is the penman. He's not the author. God is the author of the Bible, but God used human beings, and Paul is the human penman. But he's far more than that. He describes himself here in the verse as God's servant, and Jesus is apostle. Now, that word servant means slave. It could be used of a person who was put into slavery non-voluntarily, or it could be used of somebody who did volunteer to be a slave. Paul volunteered his life to God to serve him. At the core of this word servant is the idea of being in bondage. You're being tied to another. Paul volunteered to tie his life to the God who has saved his soul from hell. Now, you already know the other word, apostle. You probably know that it means sent one or sent out one. The one who sends you out is the one who tells you first where to go and secondly, what to say when you get there. Perhaps you remember these words from the book of 1 Corinthians, which say, ye are not your own, you are bought with a price. Well, those were not words just to say to other people. These words actually were things that Paul, the apostle, lived out day by day. So word number one is the word Paul. My second word is the word appointment. Yeah, I realize that the word begins with the letter A, but the letter P gets right in there, so I'm using it. The word appointment is still based here on verse 1. What was Paul's appointed task? What was his job? Well, verse 1 boils his tasks down to two things. They are evangelism 
and edification. Evangelism and edification. Do you see these words there in verse 1 which say, according to the faith of God's elect? Well, those words can mean either that Paul was sent out to further the saving faith of God's elect, or they can mean he went out to further or bolster the faith of God's elect. In the context, as I see it, I think I'm right on this, here it means that Paul was there to further, to promote the saving faith in more of the people who are God's elect. Now, that would mean that Paul was sent out by Jesus to do evangelism. Now, however you have over the years come to understand the word elect and election, you must come to grips with the fact that God's saints are elect ones. They are chosen ones. God chose them. How did he do that? Well, that has been debated by some of the most brilliant minds all through the decades and and centuries of Christendom, and it still goes on. But the one thing I do know is this. You and I only know that we become aware that we are chosen by God only after we have placed our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior. But Paul, his first task was to tell the gospel so that people got saved. But verse 1 tells us Paul's second task. He was to edify, to build up those who were believers. He was to teach them so that they, listen now, here's verse 1, to the acknowledgement, or that means the full discernment about the truth which produces godliness. What we're going to see all the way through the book of Titus is this. We're going to see the gospel explained three times. The gospel is explained, and then we're going to see how that the gospel impacts and affects how people who are believers, how they live. Oh, friend, you have often heard that Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. And amen to that. It's true. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. That relationship changes how we live, how we changes how we talk, changes how we spend our money. It changes how we treat our mates and our children. It changes how we view others, both saved and lost. It changes what we do with our time. I recently said in the broadcast that our daughter, Sarah, got married in September, and uh, she was a single gal, and at 32, she got married. Well, guess what? She married a godly, powerful man of God. He had been single, and he was 35, and all of a sudden, these two lives that were lived singly, uh, now were married, and their relationship changed how they live. Well, friend, if you come to know Jesus Christ as Savior, just as when my daughter got married and her relationships, this relationship changed how she lived, how she spent her money, how she spent her time, and so on, Do you not think it could be any less when a person is genuinely born again? It's going to change how they live. It's going to change how they talk, how they spend their money. It's going to change how we treat our family members. Tell me, my friend, has your life changed at all since you say you received Jesus Christ as Savior? My Bible tells me that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. If there's been no change, may I politely say to you, probably you're not born again. Well, let me ask for those of us who've been saved a long time, what change is Jesus prompting you and I to make today? You mean that you and I have just arrived and achieved all the change that we need to to be like Christ? I don't think so. Let's be allowing the gospel to go out of our lives and let's let the gospel change how we live. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. That's 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188. Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.